Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi. Hi. Welcome to General Hospital's recap of week March 30th through April 3rd, but I guess kind of really the second since the third was a flashback. There you go. Week three of quarantine. Yeah. Is this Three, third a thousand recording face to face? I really, I am thankful for Zoom, but I really don't like this. It's not the same. I know. Well, it was funny because so I started bringing my stuff upstairs. I'm recording in my room today because I just wanted out of the basement. The sun is shining. It's going to be beautiful. And Trust is like, oh, are you and Amanda going to sit out back? And I'm like, I wish we could. <laughs> but yeah, they taught her a good lesson by telling her no. We are going to have to have wine the first time that we record again. Oh, that'll be a good, a good so podcast. We will have to think of a good 411 subject because we try to record both of them on the same day. So there you go. Do we want to give our, speaking that I just mentioned 411, do we want to say who we're going to talk about this Thursday? We're talking about Xander Smith. Miss Cameron's dad. Yes. I think it's really appropriate because, I mean, he just started talking about him and he doesn't really talk, he didn't know his dad. Right. And it also reminded me of something else as I was doing my research. Um, there's a good chance we're going to have to do Emily soon. Oh, yeah. There's probably a lot of people, if they started in like the past 10 years. That's actually really funny because I was watching the stuff for the 411 on the like regular living room TV. And my girls were like, what are you watching? And I was like, it's General Hospital. And they're like, No, it's not. Like, no one on our TV was anyone that they recognized from the past couple years because they weren't even born then. Yeah. So, I mean, that's – there's a real good – I think that we should do her soon. Because she's still mentioned from time to time. Right. And it's Scout's namesake. Yep. Well, Emily Scout. Yes. Emily. Scout is from Kill Mockingbird. Right. Yeah, so that's what we'll be talking about on Thursday, Mr. Xander Smith and – Gosh, was he gorgeous. I know. Those were some good episodes. I hope they can get that chemistry back between some of the actors because that was so good. I agree. Yes. So where do you want to start for this week? I guess start at the beginning, which would have been that Nell didn't sign that consent form and Carly locked her on the roof. But I felt like it was very anticlimactic. I really liked that. Bobby was almost coming clean with Monica and Monica like stopped her and they just fist bumped and walked away. I was yep. like, you guys might not get along all the time. I don't feel they don't have like a, a real butting heads like she and Leslie did, but right. do Monica and Bobby not get along? I think that they didn't like each other because of all the Carly Michael stuff back in the day. Maybe Bobby was protecting Carly because that's her kid and yeah. Monica had to protect AJ, so. But never anything significant, right? Mm, No, nothing besides that. No, just the fact that they both wanted their grandkid, which makes sense. Right, and rightfully so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I thought it was, I like that Elizabeth still helped. No. Yes. You know, that she did the right thing that you're supposed to do, and we've talked about it, you know, if we were in that position, even though you're supposed to do the thing, Sometimes it would be very difficult, especially for someone like Nell, who has no redeeming traits right now. Yeah. I mean it, though. I'm still – I hope that she's able to see Wiley heal, even though they said that he's going to need additional in the future or whatever. I hope that she's right. able to see him heal and be okay so that maybe she can heal from her own. Right. I didn't go back and listen, but when Jax was talking with Nina – He mentioned that he is the reason why now – did he mention it or did Carly mention it? Carly mentioned it. Okay. But Jax did not mention it to Nina. I don't think so. Because we really – it's really Jax's fault that we have this whole issue. Mm Mm-hmm. But if it didn't happen, we wouldn't have Jocelyn still. Absolutely. But he's not even the solution, though. 
he's not coming in like, you know what? Okay, I really did something here. I think he feels like he paid her dad. He's done, which isn't okay, but yeah, he did pay fair price for it, I guess. I don't know what fair market value for organs is, but I assume that he paid nicely because it's Jack's and he has all kind of money. I'm sure he paid above black market. <laughs> black market kidney. Why don't you Google that and see how fast the cops show up at your house? <laughs> Listen, it's the quarantine. I don't know how much they're <laughs> on the black market. The same kidney could be worth over $160,000. The typical price paid to donors on the black market is thought to be about 5000 but so, some donors receive as little as 1000 Oh, wow. I thought that they were worth about 557000 I thought Nell's family said 50000 and then this one says kidneys fetch about 262000 Well, with inflation, I mean, that happened how many years ago? Right. I'm not going to get into that math. <laughs> not going to do it. All right. And now we know. <laughs> <laughs> so if this is our last episode. <laughs> we should mark our podcast as education, all the things that we teach people. <laughs> I don't think that I'm going to get in trouble for Googling that, especially where there's so much information on it. And... Yeah. Apparently, you're not the first one. It, there's articles. Oh, my gosh. But. Yeah, I'm, now, I'm glad that Nell is okay because even though she's a pain, I wouldn't want her to die just yet. And not in that way. But I thought that more was going to come of it. They were kind of just like, sit down and shut up now. And she did. Yeah. I do think that this is going to push her and Michael to get, or Willow and Michael to get married, though. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Which makes me sad because, yeah. like you said, we've already done that storyline. It's dumb. It is. It's not realistic. It's not necessary. No. No, I don't know anyone who marries someone else for child custody. Like, I can't even imagine what situation that would make that much of a difference. Especially for Michael, who's already established. Well, right. So, I mean, he's already well-known in the public. So, people already know. Like, he he's known to have a support system. It's not like he's there all by himself with no one to help there's just plenty of people that are gonna help him if he has custody but not just that i mean he himself even if he didn't have a nanny and or two nannies i don't know does he have a nanny at the quarter mains and then he has a nanny at sunny and carly's or do they just use donna's nanny too mm, doesn't leo have one at the quarter mains so they probably have now it's econo- economical they're sharing nannies maybe i don't know <laughs> You don't have to go very far to research that it's a fake relationship. Right. Very quickly. Exactly. And both of those relationships have been very public. So That's what I'm saying. Like, everyone knows that he's with Sasha. Yeah. You just suddenly decided that, oh, you really love Willow? It doesn't make any sense. And Chase is okay with that? Yeah. No. Yeah. If we could just, maybe the quarantine will help the writers focus and that hasn't been written yet there you go so they have the opportunity to change it Mm -hmm. don't let us down right amanda guess what time it is what time is it it's time for me to pick out my fat fit fun selections oh my gosh you were so excited with the last box what are you gonna get this time i love fat fit fun seriously i've been using it for over a year and at first i was like do i really want to you know spend money on that yes I know how you get you over are. $200 worth of products for only $49.99 and it's once a quarter. That's not bad at all. No, not at all. One of the items that I'm getting in my spring box is a light therapy, anti-wrinkle light. Ooh, that I've yeah. seen them listed other places for well over $100 and that's, that's going to awesome. be included in my box. They also have robes, different lotions, sprays. There's a really cute umbrella on there. Tons of things for you to pick out. You're making me want one. You could go to our website, pure54podcast.com, and just go under the savings tab and click the get offer button under the FabFitFun. Make sure to use promo code RAINBOW and you get $10 off your first box. That's a deal. It's amazing. So go check out our website, pure54podcast.com, and make sure to use promo code RAINBOW for $10 off your first box. And you're going to love it. Do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? 
Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Anchor is such an easy way to record and edit a podcast, and you can do it from either your phone or computer. Best part is you don't have to worry about getting it out there. Anchor distributes to many platforms, so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. You can start making money right away without having a minimum number of listeners, too. Anchor really is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. When Valentine apologized to Nina, it was mm-hmm. so sweet and sincere. I seriously think that's like one of the best apologies ever. He's like, I'm sorry. I really messed up. I do hope you're happy. It just was, if anything happens. <laughs> it was a very sweet, sincere apology. But he mentioned her haircut two or three times. And I hadn't even noticed that she got her haircut. And so he said something. I feel like maybe he was just trying to, I don't know. We always say that guys never notice our hair. Right. I mean, good job. It was just funny because he he did. He said it two or three times in the middle of the apology. And I was like, why are you going off on her haircut? And I didn't even notice that she got a haircut. Maybe it was his anchor to bring him back, like his center. Maybe. So when he felt himself going off, he was like, haircut. You know, <laughs> don't let me, don't let me cry. Haircut. <laughs> All right. There you go. I'll accept that answer. And Mike doesn't want to do this anymore. I liked that they separated the Mike storyline by something else. Like they would show you a few minutes and then something else. So it didn't get too overwhelming because I didn't cry. And I thought for sure I was going to end up crying when they showed more Mike scenes. If they had done it in a row. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's, I feel like that's a very realistic portrayal that, you know, Felix said he just doesn't want to get hurt. Right. So I feel like that, spark where he remembered exactly who Sonny was, exactly where he was. You know, he does not want to go back to Turning Woods and all that. That's that terminal lucidity. Yes. Where they rally before death or end of life rally refers to an unexpected return of mental clarity and memory or suddenly regained consciousness that occurs in a time shortly before death in patients suffering suffering from severe psychiatric or neurological disorders. Yeah, I, they're playing it as real as they can, and that's awesome. It's just very sad. It is. I did like that he tried to fake knowing Brando so that he didn't hurt his feelings because it was very obvious. For a second, I was like, okay, so is that not Brando? That's what I was wondering. But it was just he didn't remember him. Yeah, it was cute the way he played it off, though. And his memories were way too vivid because I was like, okay, he didn't really get into deep detail. And then he wound up getting into deep detail about the memories of the horse track and everything. I was like, okay, you're Brando. (laughs) How cute was he playing with the making the necklace? Yes, with Avery. Oh, my gosh. That was adorable. I love Frigatoni. (laughs) It was like that one day they tried to show every kid and then... Then we lost them again. Well, we're building up to remember who they are so that for Lila's kids. I hope that's true. I hope that's true. I love Lila's kids. Aiden's been missing for quite some time, as has Jake. Yep. Maybe they'll – wait, have we seen them? Because we didn't see them for Christmas because Lucky took Aiden for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I think the wedding reception might have been the last time that we saw all three boys together. Oh, wow. I think you're right, but wow, that's a long time. We saw Jake for Christmas, right? Yeah. Oh, I hope he's not getting aged. Oh, don't say that. <sighs> well, Scarlett didn't. But Charlotte, who was played by Scarlett Fernandez. Right. <gasps> oh, my gosh. On Instagram, sh- there was a picture. She was Zooming with the other little kids. I saw that story. they were. Yes, they were reading stories. That was so cute. I... Okay, I welled up when I saw that because I'm like, those kids realize that they need to stay connected too and help yeah. Scarlett to be like, hey, I can read to them over Zoom. I actually recommended it to a friend of mine whose daughter's in um, pre-K and she's like, she misses her friends. I was like, you know what? I was like, maybe you can talk to the teacher and see if the teacher can Zoom with the kids and maybe just read a story, you know, mm-hmm. what's or something just so they stay connected somehow. Right. But that was really sweet. I forgot that I had left my notebook downstairs, and so I did have some notes on my phone. But other than that, I really didn't – I had a page of notes total. There wasn't – it's like they're developing storyline again because you got enough to be interested, but then they kind of pulled back on everything. 
So I just had the fact that Molly went to Sam to whine about TJ. And then I can't believe that Jordan was so mean to Molly. And I know she needed to make her point, but that was cutthroat. So I know that, I'm sorry, that was way too real. That was way too good of an acting. I think that that was her mama bear coming out that she said all the things that she probably thought. And I mean, and it's not necessarily her true. It's you hurt my son. Right. Right. You know, but she went overboard, but she was partially right where she called her an entitled brat. Yes. Yes. I didn't disagree with what she was saying. Just she went from zero to 60. There was some that, I mean, TJ doesn't want to talk to you and stuff like that, it sh- but she had to say what she had to say, you know? Yes. And then I thought it was funny that Jason basically said the exact same thing to Sam, just not in that same nasty tone of, Grow right. up. You need to be here for our kids. We can't risk you going back to jail. Right. Why is that such a hard concept for her? I don't know. Maybe it's because Alexis raised all three of them. They all have that same entitlement. <sighs> oh, Alexis. Mm-hmm. And Julian. Throw a Neil up against the wall. Yeah. Their relationship is very complicated. Alexis and Julian. Yes. But she can't have it both ways either. She called him and confided in him as a friend, and he was trying to protect her. Maybe there's some jealousy as an ex-boyfriend, but I think he had a good intention. But the thing is that when she told him that she slept with someone or however she worded it, because she didn't tell him who and she didn't tell him exactly what, she didn't say, I was assaulted. I did. She didn't say, I was taken advantage of. Right. She basically said that she made the choice to do it. Yes. Yes, she did. So for him to go from, there was a lot of zero to 60 this week. <laughs> there was. There was. And I didn't expect it to be Britt who had seen them at the hotel or wherever. I don't know. They were in New York. I don't know what hotel they said they were at. No, but that makes sense because it times correctly mm-hmm. with her. It her does. Life. Yes, they did good rating there, but. Back whenever they showed, you could tell someone was creeping on them, but you couldn't tell who. And when she said he looked familiar. Yes. I forgot it because I thought it was going to be one of the people from the board or something that that was going to be there the next day. (gasps) Yeah. So it was Brit. Yes. Good pick up there. Well, she said she saw them when she was telling Julian about it. She said she was going to say hi to Alexa. I just hadn't thought about the fact that we saw somebody creeping on them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I wasn't expecting it to be her. And I was expecting it to be more when she saw Neil at the hospital and said, you look really familiar. I was expecting that to go into a different storyline that we didn't know anything about yet. I did too. I thought it was going to be something more dawn of day background. Or whatever cult it was that her, his family daughter had been a part of. Right. Not, Britt was not in a cult, but perhaps she. Was a doctor that saw them or something, yeah. Or was aware of it from her time in prison. Right. So So I I saw that wrapped together so easily. It made sense. I just wasn't expecting it to all go that way. Yeah. And then Jordan throwing her team under the bus. Uh Uh-huh. Tagger is so alive. I know. That I was know. so him on the burner. There was no one else that she could have called to ask that question to. It well, has to be him. Harmony. Because Harmony's supposed to be her go between between her and Cyrus. So I think that they were trying to play where she was using the phone that Harmony had given her to call her to say, Hey, is it okay if I do this? Cause it's going to be very public. Is right. It a course of action to take. I think that's what they were trying to. But by her saying, of course, it's the only phone I'm allowed to reach you on, even though that's true-ish in the Harmony case. Right. It's way more. It it had to be Taggart. Yes. Or she wouldn't have done it, too. Yeah. Poor Gina. I know. She did some really good acting again this week, though. The way she went off on her family and that heart-to-heart with Ava. I... I know we've talked about this before, but, like, her relationship with Ava, because I really don't feel like Ava is just trying to replace Kiki with her. No. I think she has learned from her mistakes with Kiki, but I don't feel like she's doing a replacement. But she's really doing a great job at, like, nurturing and being there for her and everything. Mm-hmm. It was it was beautiful. I don't think she's just trying to replace Kiki because she's talking to her about her experiences as a mom, not yeah. trying to – not trying to mother her like she's her own, but saying, 
by having her call her mom. You have to call your mom. You can't have her worry. If she was trying to cut her mom out and, like, replace her as the parental person, she wouldn't be telling her to call her mom. She would be manipulating the situation to spend more one-on-one time with her. Well, and the fact that she told her, your mom scares me. Yeah. (laughs) Who scares Ava Jerome? Right. (laughs) And how cute was it when she was talking to Trina also about Cam and then Franco talking to Cam about Trina? Yes. That Frank's was kind of like, I think you guys are more than friends. Mm-hmm. That was so cute. I really like Franco as a dad. Me too. I thought that they were going to kiss again, though. I know. Me too. But no. No. Maybe later. I, I think that it will because they're still making those eyes at each other now. Mm-hmm. So they're both trying to avoid everything. Right, they were doing a cute job of talking around. You know, that thing happened, and then you left Jocelyn's real fast. The only thing was Cam worried about how much Joss knew. Yes. Could make Trina feel. Yeah. Crummy. Right. But that's a boy. Exactly. (laughs) He's a typical teenage boy. I don't know. So do you think they're going to have Brando hook up with Molly now? I hope not. Really? Oh, see, I hope so. Because she is so boring with TJ. Let's end that and have some excitement. She is young and cute and needs some new experiences. I think she might cross the line with him. Okay. I think we'll have a relationship. There was more chemistry between the two of them in that five minutes on Thursday than there's been between her and TJ in the past seven years. I know that we don't, we're not happy with how she's been lately and that she turned him down and the whole, but I don't feel like that would be the right way for her to end an eight-year relationship, even though she's under, it's like Ross and Rachel. She's assuming that they're broken up, but they're not really. (laughs) Of course, there'd be a friend. It can always come back to friends. It can always (laughs) come back to friends. (laughs) Alrighty then. But seriously, I mean, I really don't, even though she's been kind of a jerk lately, I don't see her moving on without having closure from him, not from his mom. But I don't see him coming back for a while. So by the time he comes back, I think that she could really be in a relationship with Brando. And she'll need closure from him just because it did happen in such an upsetting way. But maybe she'll be too far in love with Brando to revert back to him. If they start something in a little over a month. Okay. Because, yeah, I mean, you're right about the chemistry and everything. But just the eight years is a long time. It is a long time. But she was also a young girl for a lot of that. You can find your forever. Who was that couple? Their first kiss. They were 11 and 13 and they're still together. And that's adorable. And the romantic in me absolutely loves that story. But realistically, that's not the way it goes for most people. Or most people at least break up. Maybe she needs to be with Brando. TJ needs to come back. They need to be apart for a little while. And then they can find their way back to each other. Okay. Okay. It would be nice to have one couple that just lasts. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but that's not very soap opery or real life at this point either. No, but it's still nice. <laughs> it would be nice. It would be nice. And then my other note as far as this week goes was just them sending Kevin to talk to Renault. That was stupid. Yeah, I didn't understand it and it would never hold up in court. They could have at least paid off one of Kevin's psychiatrist friends to go interview them. Like and Neil? Him. Exactly. He has a personal background to some less than savory things in his background that he does not want to continue you right know, personal experience with the cult what's that called it's not deprogramming or something like that okay yeah i imagine that he would have the same feelings towards drugs i would think so too or they talk about mercy hospital all the time is there not a psychiatrist on staff at mercy i feel like there should be yeah can't we ask him for a favor or her for a favor and you can't walk into court as the mayor with the last name Collins and say, here, this psychiatrist who happens to have the same last name as you, my husband, recommends this and think it's going to hold up. Right. And Robert called them out on that instantly. Isn't Mercy the name of the other hospital on Grey's Anatomy too? Yes. I feel bad for all the Mercy hospitals. And we have one here in Pittsburgh. We do. And it doesn't get talked about as much as the other main ones. No, but it's part of the UPMC health network. It is, but I, <laughs> this is I not know. sponsored by UPMC. <laughs> that would be a really good sponsorship, but no. And we'd have to get Highmark too, because yeah. they don't like each other, so they try to Coke and Pepsi it out. There you go. 
So I guess that's it from the first four days. Right. And then Friday was about flashback, flashback Friday. Friday. So my notes for flashback Friday, because it feels like we just did this since it was only a year ago. And I remember us talking about what we liked and didn't like. My likes and dislikes would be the same of it was nice to see them, you know, have their walks down memory lane. And I did get a little teary eyed here and there. But because I had already seen it and I was trying to watch it from what hadn't I caught before, I came up with other questions that aren't really significant, but they still popped into my head. Okay. At one point, Lucy says that they really, she was really wanting to FaceTime with Serena so that she could hear the end of the will, but the connection was bad. And then they just like dropped the conversation. It was like, oh, okay, she can't join us. She has not- a will now because she couldn't FaceTime. Right. There's not Wi-Fi at the hospital or one of the other people don't have a phone by a different carrier that maybe has a stronger signal. You're not going to attempt to reach out to her one more time. It's just, oh, yeah, sorry, it didn't work. So you're done. Yeah. No, that was a good catch. I actually, I didn't pick up on that. Yeah, it was Lucy and Scott were standing on the staircase right before they started talking about how... They just had really bad timing, but they cared about each other and whatever. And so yeah. she threw Serena in there, which made sense since that's their kid. But it was, yeah, the Wi-Fi or the FaceTime didn't work. So, okay. And I thought, really? You could have even not shown her face, just held the phone like, oh, okay. She's trying to be part Body of this. can try it on his phone? Right. Exactly. Anything. But, and then in my mind, Monica is the same age as Laura but then they keep talking about all of the trouble between Monica and Leslie from back in the day yeah so why Monica still a doctor and Leslie's not same reason why some people retire at 30 and some retire at 70 I feel like they could use more doctors and since they let people come in and out and only work for a few months and then leave it would make sense that Leslie was still one of their doctors. See, I don't see Laura and Monica in the same age group. I'd say a decade older. I mean, that makes sense the way that they're talking about it, that it was Monica and Leslie were going after the same man and stuff. But I don't know. Well, now I need to find out. So just hold on while I Google. Okay. Okay, so Denise Alexander, who portrays Leslie, is 80. Huh. Isn't it funny that she plays Leslie and then Leslie Charlson plays <laughs> and Leslie Charlson is 75. Wow. They both look amazing. And Jeannie Francis is 57. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to. Monica does not look 75. No, none of them look their ages at all. And, and I also and I'm don't not... think Jeannie Francis and Laura look 75 either. Right. Right. No, I'm not. I don't know, just the way that they talk to each other. Like, it feels like Lucy and Laura and Monica were all close in age. But then the more that you look at the backstories, it is Monica and Leslie that are closer in age. Yes. So, I don't know. They're in that age range. Of Alan, because Monica and Alan and Lucy and Alan. Right, right. Okay. They're they're in that age range, like... um, who is it like Sunny you never actually know how old Sunny is supposed to be it still feels like he was older than he was when he was younger and now he's not as old as he should be he's in his 50s though I think okay I think because he was in his 20s when he came 25 years ago oh my gosh it's been longer than 25 years now it's been like 27 yeah I don't know maybe people people I think he's older than I don't know. People just don't age in my mind because I don't age in my mind. <laughs> Could that be it? That that totally works. <laughs> we are all 29. I don't know what anyone's talking about. Yeah, I didn't really write down any notes about the Flashback Friday. Like you said, we had just watched it. I loved that it was last year's anniversary episode, and I think that was perfect because of the impeachment setbacks. They may not have had time right. or the ability to actually – do a because typically the anniversary episode is like the Christmas episode and the Thanksgiving episode. It doesn't follow storyline. It's its own little standalone. Yes. Odd. But 
we almost had a heart attack because it wasn't on Hulu as the Friday episode, where in the past, when they do show reruns, right? I think they do follow the sequential. Yes. At least from what I remember, there's only been a few times that they've had to do it, and I've watched it on Hulu where it shows Friday's show was from the 90s, and it was shown as Friday's show, but it yes. says from blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Thank you to Melanie Joy on Instagram who directed us to go back to episode or season 57 and just look for episode two. Yes. And then it did say that it was, a, it didn't call it a rerun, but it's it a had the, Friday right on the side. Yes. And, and it had the beginning part where it was introduced as this is last year's episode, blah, blah, blah. And that was really sweet that they had Laura Wright introduce that. From what I read, they're going to have a different character or different cast member introduce each episode. Oh, that will be cute. Lots of people were wanting the old, old, old episodes. Someone mentioned that if they do that, they have to pay royalties. Oh, okay. Can we all start a GoFundMe to pay yes. royalties <laughs> to let us see some 80s, 90s, whatever episodes, you know? I think it would be cute if they just revisited what they just talked about on the 50th anniversary, like replay the episode that Elizabeth was raped, replay the episode where a BJ got, BJ gave her heart to Maxie and mm-hmm. that kind of thing. I don't know if those are still too far back that it would cause them to have to pay royalties or not, but just to get everyone back on the same page. Cause again, if you haven't watched it all these years, you don't know that Maxie has BJ's heart other than the few things that they've talked about here and there. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. And Lucy never auctioned off all those dresses. Right. That should be a real thing. That should be. <laughs> we we'll be trying to buy a dress. We can <laughs> empty it. There you go. Once this is all over and done with. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I guess hopefully they do continue to show them on Hulu. Because we posted on Instagram and Twitter asking how people were watching the Flashback Fridays if they don't have cable. And I left it up because a lot of people were like, you know what? I was wondering the same thing. Thank you so much because there was that answer in there. So, yes. So that's it, I think. It is. Time for quarantine. <laughs> do, do, do. Reality check. These have to be the most boring reality checks ever. <laughs> They are. Like, I have next to nothing. (laughs) Well, how was your first week of homeschooling at least one of your kids? Or you started with the second one halfway through, right? We did. So my daughter's school sent home their packet. We got it on Monday, and I wasn't going to start her later in the afternoon without a plan. So I took time, and we looked through what they had sent home, and I said, okay, I'm going to put together something we started her Wednesday because it was April 1st. You know, it was just a nice clean. And it's been going pretty well. We've only had one kind of issue mm-hmm. that was just more creativity. Couldn't think of how to do. They had to make their own planet and describe it and draw it. And she's like, I can't think of what I would want my planet to be. Aww. And I actually brought up the podcast. And I said, you know, this Amanda and I had this idea for years. And we could not think of a name. I was like, it was at least two, if not three years. Mm-hmm. And then one day we had the name and it's all from there. I said, so just have it in the back of your mind. You know, oh, this would be cool on my planet. And yeah. one day it'll just come to you. So, and then my son did really well. He actually wrote out, we, we've been struggling with organization and things like that. And I'm really and I think he's really also appreciating the fact that we get to do this one-on-one. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he's a junior, same as your M. So he's very independent and wants to be independent. But this has been a good way of us being able to collaborate on, okay, here's how you should structure your day. And so I think overall it's gone pretty well. And we've gone for a lot of walks. We went for a walk this morning. My daughter rode her. She got a tricycle bike for Christmas that she rode about two miles this morning. So. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, she did good. Other than that, I mean, just a lot of staying home. <gasps> the purple shed's gone. It's finally more closer <laughs> to the color of what I wanted it to be. <laughs> well, that's for good. Listening, last year, I had a cream-colored shed that I wanted 
like a stone gray that if you looked at it at a certain angle, it might appear to have some purple in it. And I'm aware of the fact that when you look at a color online, it can be different. We even got the color swatch and put it up against it and was like, okay, this is, this is going to be good. Painted the whole thing and it was lilac. <laughs> it was. And purple's my favorite color. And God bless my husband. He was like, listen, I'm fine with it. I said, that's fine that you're fine with it. I'm not. That's not the color that I wanted because my goal is I want to make a sitting garden. So that's going to be the backsplash. And yeah. So a neighbor of ours actually had a can of gray paint that he needed to get rid of. Oh, wow. So we did some experimenting and it's closer to the slight gray with, you look at it and you go, is that gray or is that purple or is that gray? So it's. And that's what I wanted. There you go. Yep. So I guess that's it. What about you? <laughs> Same kind of stuff. It was our first week of school. The big girls, it's funny because every time they get frustrated with school, they ask to go cyber. And now that we're doing it, and I know this is nothing like real homeschool because they have a lot more work for real homeschool and they have a lot more opportunities to do other things. They're not locked in the house, but it just gave them enough of a taste of, okay, you would be home with me and you would have to still do your work that by the end of the week, they were like, yeah, no, we don't ever want to talk about going cyber again. That's way too much independence for them. Um, and they didn't like the fact, although it was good, that the teachers were closely monitoring what they were doing. I think Emily wanted a little more independence because some of her assignments were assigned Monday, but they weren't due until Friday. So oh. for her, she would need to look at it again until she was ready to turn it in on Friday. But the teachers still wanted you going in every day because that's how they were collecting attendance. So yeah. I had a phone call at one point of, you know, is Emily even working on this? And I was like, yeah, but it's not due until Friday. So she kind of was treating it more like a college class than uh, they were ready for her to be doing. And mm, Megan didn't have that much work. They were really the easiest on the middle school kids, it seemed like. Yeah. And that had me concerned because she was the first one done every day. And I kept asking, are you sure that you're really done? Are you sure? But for the most part, she was on task. So it was good. It's nice to see that they can show some independence because a lot of times they try not to just because it's easier to have mom do it. So Great. That was different or whatever. And then Madeline, I mean, she, she misses her friends. She misses her teacher. Her teacher's awesome. She does morning message every morning and she wore like a silly hat the one day and she was dressed up like Elsa the one day and had uh, Olaf with her and Aww. like every morning. Yeah, it's adorable and she's just so sweet. And so she's going to put together like a slideshow of the kids. If you send in a picture of them holding an inspirational quote or just I miss you or a story they or a paper that they draw or whatever, she's going to put together a slideshow so everyone can see their friends next week at least for the slideshow so it was that's cute but besides that tons of time outside but not I haven't been bike riding but Madeline's been bike riding and trying to learn all new tricks and playing on the swing set and all that kind of stuff so thank god it's not a rainy crappy week because I think we'd be ready to kill each other if so yeah speaking of well not killing each other <laughs> um my office did one of those, we all held up a sign at home and they took screenshots of it and put together a message for the community. Oh, nice. And we sent that out. That was nice because my office is kind of doing the same thing. We're meeting at least twice a week on Zoom, you know, just, okay, here's the updates in the industry, blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing. So, I mean, you have to stay connected. I'm thankful at least like we get this. This morning on my walk, one of my best friends lives like two streets over mm -hmm. and she's out mm -hmm. with her husband doing gardening. And I'm like, I can't even hug you. You know, it's I'm like right. there and I can't even, and we're huggers. Like, yes. Yeah. You no. need to hug. <laughs> I, I'm not a big hugger, so I'm okay with that. Okay. But it's just funny. You just don't realize how much the little bit of contact is a constant every day. I had my first Zoom call with my family this week, and my sister and I were on the phone for six hours. And I'm not exaggerating. It was honestly. I know six you're not. <laughs> And my kids were like, what did you do? I, it was happy hour. We each had a drink and a snack. And we just sat there and talked about all the dumb stuff that we would normally talk about at my mom's on our Thursday night, like family nights. But it was six hours because I haven't seen her. I haven't talked to her since the beginning of March, pretty much. So I'm doing that with some friends on Friday because it's one of their birthdays. And her boyfriend was supposed to cook the three of us dinner. Aw. 
and that's not happening. So we're going to have dinner through Zoom. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. So, but yeah, so I guess that's it for that's this it. recap. Join us on Thursday as we talk about Xander Smith. And have a good week. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 